Welcome to our third series on food safety. This section is going to be covering bacterial contamination. I want to talk about how bacteria actually gets into our food. And first we'll start with one of the more common ways that meat is contaminated. And this has to do with the bacteria that lives in an animals, you can think of a, a cow or cattle, in their intestines. Now, when you go to a feedlot, you have a lot of animals in a small place. They generally are defecating in the same place that they're eating and roaming. They don't have much room to roam. Um, but during the processing step, during that slaughter slash processing step, um, somewhere along the way, that fecal matter gets on the meat. So it's the bacteria from the animal's intestines that actually gets in the meat even before it is packaged. And that's some of the more deadly bacteria, the more deadly pathogens that we have to be concerned about. Now as far as produce, one of the ways it can be contaminated is with contaminated water. So sometimes recycled water, um, reused water is used on these plants and these carry bacteria so then the bacteria gets onto the plants. Another way is through uh, when manure is used for fertilization and this actually can happen more with uh, organic foods because they use more natural sources of fertilization than some of the conventional foods. So we do see this um, more with the organic produce and de definitely with leafy greens. Um, lastly is there's also contamination from around our kitchen and I'm going to get to this, the bacteria that get in the food and then it gets onto the kitchen and then it can multiply, but also from the bathroom being transported to the kitchen. And that's if uh, there's any fecal matter um, in the bathroom, you're not washing, washing your hands when you leave the bathroom and you head into the kitchen. So there is also that cross-contamination. I like to uh, read this quote, and this is from Dr. Charles Gerber from the University of Arizona, the microbiologist, who's also called Dr. Germ. You'd be better off eating a carrot stick that fell into the toilet than one that fell into your kitchen sink. Now, this statement comes from a lot of research that he's done. He has uh, looked at areas around the office space and the average home and where most of that, uh, where most of the microorganisms are. What he found, especially when he was uh, swabbing around the toilet, is that that tended to be fairly clean because people clean or disinfect with their, to their toilets. But they don't do the same thing to their sink. And the bacteria that are contaminated in the food generally get washed down the sink and then using sponges and washcloths and trying to clean up with a bacterial uh, ridden cloth or sponge is also part of the problem as well. Now uh, some of his research has shown that 10% uh, of dishcloths and sponges actually have salmonella and this is actually a little bit scary if you think about it, but what do most people do? You use a washcloth, you wash your hands, it gets a little damp, there are bacteria on your hands, and then it just sits. Uh, and it depends probably on the environment you're in, um, but it's going to be a nice warm environment on that sponge or that dishcloth for the bacteria to multiply. And sponges are even worse. The average sponge has about one billion, with a B, bacteria, one billion. Now, one of the ways that, one of the suggestions for this is if you have a damp sponge, you really need to put it into the washing machine. It shouldn't be left out and reused. For sponges, you can put them in the microwave. In one to two minutes, depending on the strength of your microwave, uh, should kill about 99.9% .9 of the bacteria. So the general recommendation is uh, two minutes, but some microwaves can be a little bit stronger. Now, also, we found that when we did the swabs of the sink is that E. coli, um, are living in the sink and they feed off the food that really gets put down the drain. Uh, the way to uh, mitigate this is to use a disinfectant and you should be using a disinfectant when you clean your sink on a daily basis. There are 200 times more fecal bacteria on a cutting board than on a toilet seat. Again, people clean their toilet seats. But this fecal bacteria, usually from the food, raw meat, because it comes from the cow's intestines, uh, is on the cutting boards. And the way you should deal with this is 
Use separate cutting boards. You shouldn't be cutting fresh vegetables on the same cutting board that you use for meat. So have two separate cutting boards. Whether it's a, um, and then they always have to be cleaned afterwards. Think about some sort of sterilization. Going into the dishwasher would actually be the best. And that's probably why the plastic cutting boards are a little bit better than the uh, wood cutting boards. Even though some of the wood cutting boards have a, an antimicrobial resin and so, so they're better than they used to be, uh, the ability to put a plastic one in the dishwasher is probably um, puts that plastic one up a little bit better. The kitchen counter is the dirtiest place in the kitchen. And e. coli is common. So the kitchen counter the kitchen counter, the way the kitchen counter becomes contaminated is by those dirty sponges and washcloths. So you have the washcloths that you washed your hand after maybe you cut some meat or dealt with produce, and you, you rinse it, uh, you use your dishcloth to actually um, dry your hands. And then that dishcloth sits there, and then the bacteria multiply. Um, I think you can get up to about, if you start with one bacteria in 24 hours, you can get up to about 8 million bacteria. And then you take that and you wipe it all over your countertop. And now you're just spreading bacteria everywhere. So how do you deal with this? Well, um, it's good to have, one, you can use a clean washcloth and then you wash it. The second thing is have a sponge, um, one sponge for your counters and one sponge for your dishes. Both of those sponges should be put in the microwave. And you can zap out all the bacteria and then you clean with and then use a disinfectant. And so that's one of the best ways to uh, deal with that issue. Now lastly, I just want to go over just some basic food safety tips. Uh, you always want to wash your hands. Any times that you're working, whether it's produce or meat, you should be washing your hands. Also, you want to keep your hot food hot. As soon as it's going down to room temperature, you take it out of the oven, there's hardly any bacteria. You put it at room temperature, and now any sort of bacteria contamination can happen as it settles down to room temperature. And remember, that generation time for bacteria, they can multiply between 40 and 140 degrees. You want to keep cold food cold as well. Uh, in your refrigerator, remember that bacteria can multiply in the refrigerator just really slowly. Uh, so they're not going to multiply as quickly. But you have it at room temperature and it's going to multiply faster. The best thing to do with hot food, if you're going to refrigerate it, is don't wait for it to cool because bacteria are multiplying in there. But to immediately put it in, actually of a thin layer and a bigger container so it cools quickly and more evenly. And as far as the hot food, uh, the microwave is actually a difficult area for heating things, uh, particularly meat, and it's because it doesn't heat evenly. So you can have one area of the meat that's overcooked or maybe it's really hot, but then another area of the meat that is undercooked. You have to be really careful about meat not recommended to cook in the microwave. Um, and keeping raw food separate. So a lot of people keep their produce on a bottom shelf and their meat above it. And there are a lot of drippings. And what Dr. Gerber found was when you actually sample the areas of the refrigerator, that bottom shelf has the most bacteria. And it's because things tend to drip down there. It tends to stay moist. So don't forget to disinfect and clean out that bottom shelf of your refrigerator. And that's all for uh, our section on bacterial contamination.